Now, there's a little known indicator that probably a lot of you have not heard of called the Hindenburg Omen. Now, John, I took a, took a shot at creating an AI image here to describe the Hindenburg Omen, and I, I think I've captured the essence of it. But, you know, it's an indicator that doesn't trigger all that often, and it's got a bit of a spotty record. But, John, it did detect the 1987 and 2008 stock market crashes. It triggered last week, and this week has been nothing but red. John, is it time to sell and leave the market? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, I love your picture here. First of all, if it was really time to sell, the Hindenburg would be blowing up. It's not blowing up just yet. So maybe that is what the indicator is, the pre. So let's look at what a Hindenburg indicator uh, is. Uh, so it was created by a fellow named uh, Jim uh, Mika. Mika um, and he looked at the conditions that happened during market tops and seeing if there was like a set of conditions that kind of line up that would indicate you know, a potential market um, fall. So let's look at the let's look at the inputs, and then we'll go to the current market and see if we can kind of see what uh, this is supposed to be uh, showing. But I want you to keep in mind that a lot of the technical indicators, you know, sometimes when you get very complex co uh, technical indicators, that there's this bit of coincidence. In other words, um, you know. I, I look out my window and I see my neighbor take out his umbrella and I'm just like, oh, well, that means it's going to rain today, right? You know, it's kind of a coincidence type of thing. And there's also in statistics, there's this kind of this idea of uh, curb fitting. In other words, finding the inputs that uh, reinforce the concept that you're trying to do. So let's just keep that in mind. So the first one is 52 week highs and lows of are greater than 2.8. Now, originally, uh, the design was 2.2% of total issues, uh, and they've raised that. It went to 25 and then to, to 2.8 for two reasons. One was the volatility of the market, and the second is the number of issuance. So in the um, this is for the NICE or the New York Stock Exchange. So there's 1,900 or so uh, issuances in um, uh, the NICE. So if you did 2.8%, that would be about 54. Uh, so in other words, you want to see new weekly highs or new weekly lows be, be above 54. Uh, a small number of new highs or lows is greater than 75. In other words, what we're looking for here is, Thomas, remember that kind of that game that had uh, the sand in it and the liquid sand and you would like turn it upside down and it would like erode from underneath and then, then the sand would fall, right? Oh yeah, I had to play that. I, I would play that a lot. My parents had to pull me away from it, John, to get my homework done. <laughs> it was, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the market, you know, some of the market going up, 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 but an erosion below. So that's, what the, that's what we're kind of trying to find here. A uh, 10 week moving average from um, the composite is still, going up the mcclellan oscillator now the mcclellan oscillator is a breath indicator um and we'll look at that uh that is negative and then there here are some of these what i call curb fitting um conditions first of all the new highs can't be more than twice the new lows um the combination of all these events must occur within a three-day consecutive period and a one-off, in other words, an omen that only happens once, or we get this condition once, doesn't necessarily signal the sell-off. We need to see it happen two times, or maybe even as much as three times in this 36-day uh, period. So, And there's a little source there. There's a lot of places you can find it, but this is where I got the source for this information. Okay, so let's go to... Uh, the chart. So here's the uh, New York Stock Exchange Composite Index, and this is a weekly chart. So the red line here represents the 10-day moving average. Uh, thanks, Thomas. And you can see that it has been, um, uh, excuse me, the 10-week moving average. You can see that it has been uh, still uh, trending up. Now, as of this week, it did turn. Oh, 
re rebooting there, it did uh, turn lower. Below here is the McClellan Oscillator. If you don't know how to add studies, just go to studies and you can find McClellan Oscillator. And you can see that it's been negative for three weeks now. Now, let me drop down to a lower time frame because I'm going to show you the other parts of the components. Um, so here I'm dropping down into a daily chart. Now, our McClellan Oscillator and our moving averages are not going to be at the right time frame for the indicator for the Omen. But there are two panels here I want you to look at. And these are um, what we call FX expressions. And again, let me just kind of show you where that is. So up here where it says FX. Um, you can put special symbols. Uh, last week, we did a webinar on uh, breath indicators, and we talked about a lot of these uh, special symbols that bar chart has. And so we're looking at the MAHN, which represents new 52-week highs in the NICE and uh, number of 52-week lows in the NICE. So, again, I just want to show you where all this stuff is. Uh, here is that webinar uh, you can watch, and we go into where you can find those special symbols. And if I go to stock market momentum page, and I'm looking at new highs and lows, and I go over here, it says details, um, I can scroll down and find a lot of those uh, special symbols. And where are we? Here we go. So MAHN is 52-week highs, and MA. LN is 52 week low. So let's go back to the chart. So again, remember we want to see um, above that 54 number and there you can, can see we got it. Um, we want to see the lower one uh, above 70. Now this is where, you know, I think this is where it can, gets a little subjective and con 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 oh, excuse me, that was a tough word to say. <laughs> but um, here you can see multiple signals, right? So we had um, and the lows here and then also here on the highs. So I don't think we really got to that 75. Uh, the lower needs to be above 75 um, compared to the higher. But um, I think if we did the numbers in here, I think we could say that, yeah, the lower here was at 75 uh, there. And let's see the higher here uh, couple days beforehand got up to as much as 80. So there it did make that um, um, criteria. So again, Thomas, you know, this is, a, you know, a, an indicator that a lot of folks kind of like to lean on, but the math behind it does say something. So you did point out the point that it did recognize the crash in 1987 and the one in 2008. But, you know, those were um, very historical moments. There was a lot of other things going on. But here are some stats for you. So since 1985, when um, this indicator was created, it has had 27 confirmed omens with only two that weren't followed by a decline of more than 2%. And the odds of a down move of more than 15% is about one in four. So again, like you said, hit or miss. In other words, about one out of every four times or 25% of the time you get one of these major market tops or corrections. I think what is more important is that we are at an all time high and that, the, you know, maybe the market is due for a correction. I will let you know that they did signal back in April when we had a, a market correction as well. So so here's my thought on this one, Thomas, is if you're going to rely on one of these kind of these funky indicators, and in this case is telling you the odds are one in four, then you got to just do like a sports better or just like a gambler's. I will look for a trade to take the downside position, but I want to make sure that I get a return of greater than one to four, right? I want to look for the, a five to one or a six to one trade or a 10 to one trade because the odds are stacked against me that we're not going to see one of these big moves. And more likely what we're going to see is one of these small corrections that could be like in the, say, the three to 8%. Okay.